All right, thank you for staying with us. And the conversation, as I said earlier, before the break, is about the rule of law. Really, doing it the right way. Um, if you say it's about the judiciary, or some are saying, is the judiciary on trial? Maybe, maybe not. You know, <clears throat> is this a battle of ego? Maybe, maybe not. Is it about using the instrument of the state for self-aggrandizement? Maybe, maybe not. You know, is it about something being criminal or civil in nature? We have a lawyer here that will tell us. He's not just a lawyer. He's a right activist as well. And um, it's about, and maybe, let me do that again, uh, the Dele Faro Timi and the Aria Febabalola saga in which Febabalola, you know, through his counsel has, you know, dragged Dele Faro Timi to court and said he has defamed him his law firm, his institution, what he has built over the years in his book, in Dele Faro Timi's book, or uh, the criminal um, practice, um, you know, I'll get that name correctly, I don't mean now, you just have skipped my mind, and I like to do it very rightly, and if you could have that picture, the picture of the book that is causing this particular opera on the screen right now, yes. Nigeria and its criminal justice system. Exactly, that's what you have here. Uh, you know, it says so many things. And Dele Faro Timi has been saying, whatever I've written was clearly, I was clear, uh, you know. Um, in fact, in a particular uh, interview, he said he's that sticking in, that he has taken him 11 years to come up with that book. So he knows what he's saying. And Arefa Babalola is not having that. He said, whatever I've written there has defamed him and has thrown whatever has worked for in the dustbin you know has caused him some inconvenience with his family and all over the world as well you might want to see this video we'll come back after that it came to my knowledge that there is a charge that had been fraudulently preferred against me before a court in a Giti state at the instance of chief Afeba balola this charge had been fraudulently preferred eating from view and the court at purportedly demanded my presence multiple times and I had failed to appear before this court. And this court had then proceeded to issue a bench warrant for my arrest. This is classic Afe Babalola. I detailed his corruptive influence in my book, Nigeria and its criminal justice system. And what he has done is exactly what he has always done in hiding. But he has done it this time again. And the calculations were that I would have been picked up, taken before this judge who must have either been compromised or misled. All right. Um, we have with us, uh, that was an interview granted before his arrest. And he has spoken on a range of things. And that's Dele Faro TV. And then, Arafe Babalola has taken it up to say, this is defamation of my character so the workings and how everything has been for almost a week is what we are talking about today the substance of the matter you know we might not be able to delve into that much because the case is in court but then how is this going to help our justice system is the focus for information and for education we have been joined by Chetam Thierry Nwala he is a lawyer and right activist he joins us virtually this morning thank you good morning good to have you again good morning and thank you for having me once more all right uh, this is about your constituency your primary constituency so um, I, I take it that you are very much interested in what is going on right now i'm sure you've seen different videos different opinion models uh, many lawyers have come out with opinion points on different dailies on social media, right, and what they believe in. But one thing is our concern. We are talking about the justice system here in Nigeria. And this um, program is not for or against any of the parties, but it's for information and educate, uh, education purpose. Now, Aria Febabalola has said, this is defamation. It has cost me my name. It has cost me, um, you know, some comfort with my family. We have been exposed you know, all around the world, because that book was released on an online, a global online platform. In fact, it has been said that it's a bestseller right now 
and people have been buying, seeing what Daily Fire Timmy has written. So Arefa Babla has taken him to court to say, you have almost cost me my name and everything has worked for. But it's not just about that. Daily Faro Timmy was arrested in Lagos, taken to Ekiti State. He was arraigned. He was denied bail. He's now, you know, he was told to be remanded in a, you know, in a correctional facility in, you know, Ekiti State. I do get it to be precise. What's your take on this matter? Is it civil in nature? Is it criminal in nature? You are the lawyer here. Let us in. Thank you very much once again, and um, it's important that um, you brought up a topic as uh, important as this. Mm. Um, you know, this has been the issue across the country for a while now, and it is good that Nigerians also know and have the right knowledge as to how these things work most times. Now, I'm going to start with a few things and um, to make people understand what exactly and how exactly defamation works. First of all, I must say clearly that uh, defamation is both civil and criminal in nature. Mm. Defamation is both civil and criminal in nature. So um, the police can actually weed in through a defamatory issue. Uh, and as well, you know, an individual can decide to use a civil uh, means to uh, actually sue for defamation. So uh, when, when a matter is defamatory, a lot are uh, to the fact that it can be civil or criminal in nature. However, some of us have advocated and said that defamation shouldn't be criminalized. It should be purely a civil matter. And we should decriminalize defamation. Uh, because if you decriminalize defamation, a matter against my personality, we cannot be using state resources to start pursuing for the protection of an individual reputation. We cannot be spending uh, taxpayers' money on trying to make sure that you gain back your own reputation. It's, it's, it's logically, it doesn't make any sense. And that's why some of us have advocated and said that uh, defamation should be decriminalized in Nigeria. But that today, as we speak, defamation is a criminal offense and also a civil offense. So a person can also bring defamation against you. Uh, both criminally and civil in our present state. Until that law is changed, that is the law. However, going down to these particular issues as raised by um, Dele Farotini, I sympathize with Dele. I really sympathize with Dele. You know, Nigeria, Nigeria has found itself a banana republic where um, anything goes. And of course, you see, he, 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 he's been, uh, we are now using state resources to try to protect the, the, the image of a mighty big wing in this particular country. Mm. And let me say this, let me be frank. I have spoken out against the judiciary a lot of times about the things happening in the judiciary. It is terrible. It is fearful. See, what it's telling is that, you know, why we tell some of us cannot come out like to call in, mm. is that sometimes it's not like you do not know that these things happen in the judiciary. It's not like what Julie has said is is false. In quotes now, it, it's not like what Julie has said is false. But I'm not, uh, there, there's one thing to say the truth. There's another thing to back the truth with evidence. Sometimes you will know the truth about the thing, but we not have the evidence to back it up. But does that remove that your truth you have not said? It doesn't remove it. Now, the reason why sometimes you need the evidence is because of defamation. When mm. defamation is brought against you, if a suit of defamation is brought against you, so you can as well stand and be able to and, uh, plead justification. Because when defamation is brought, the only defense to defamation is justification. Saying that what I said is true. And this is the reason why I said that this is true. These are four fingers. No, you are saying the five fingers. Mm. Oh, your, your, your four fingers have offended my hands. So on that note, I'm taking up a, a suit against you for the permission. But I'm able to prove to you that you have a I have a video or a picture showing that these are four fingers and not five fingers. Now, justification, naturally, naturally, is a suit of the permission. So, where Daniel Farouk has 
may prove to show that mm. yes, his allegations against Holy Judiciary and his allegations against um, Atom of Alola are true. Mm. Then, then, there and then, the matter against him is to will, will die a natural death. Mm. It will die a natural death because he will just only be justification. Right. But even the issues he has raised are not genuine. It's very genuine, I will tell you. They are very, very genuine. Mm. How corrupt our system is as of today. Who does not know that the judiciary is corrupt today? What are we going to pretend in this country? Who does not know that the judiciary is, not, is, is corrupt? Mm. The judiciary is humanly corrupt. Mm. And let me tell you, it is those who have benefited from the judiciary that have corrupted the judiciary today. Those right. who have benefited humanly from the judiciary. Yes. And the judiciary has made what they, they have made so much money from the judiciary and corrupting the system today. Mm. Who are the judges? Who are the justices we have to live? Who are, the, who are the justices who have to live? The judges go from the High Court down to the Supreme Court. Who are they? Friends, cronies, family members, or politicians. All right. And we say we want to make people in our system. It's yeah. not possible now. We're not serious. We're not a serious country. We're not a serious country. Now, let, let's take it one after the other, uh, you know, uh, to just paint uh, what the charge sheet and um, the grievance of uh, Aria Feba Balola. In his petition, he said, I write to report the criminal defamation of myself, my law firm, Afeba Balola and Co., and my lawyers in person of Uludra Molaisen and Ola Faro by one daily Faro team in his book titled Nigeria and his criminal. Uh, justice system published by Daily Faro Team Publishers in respect of suit number uh, SC slash 146 2005. Major Mutala Elitu and ORS is Royal Highness Obati Jania Kiloe or an ORS, maybe in others. Sometimes on 2 that 2nd of November 2024, one of our lawyers while traveling through Mutala Mohammed Airport bought a book by Daily Faro Team titled Nigeria and its Criminal Justice System published by daily faro team he read the book the said book and immediately brought it to my attention many of my lawyers also bought the said book and read same the said defamatory statement are detailed below and i'm quoting now that are afe babalola corrupted the supreme court to procure a fraudulent judgment in the service of his client that are afe babalola uludra amola and ulufaro and the law offices of Afe Babalola and Co. Emmanuel Chambers compromised the Supreme Court. These are every words. The Supreme Court and the remaining semblance of integrity it might have had when they went back to the Supreme Court and got the court to swim in the sewer of corruption and shameful self abnegation. These are some of the things written in that petition. Now, uh, Barrister Chetam. You know, when the way this has been written to say it has impugned on my career, Aria Fabalola is a legal juggernaut who has practiced this particular profession for almost 50, 60 years. And, you know, the book is now a bestseller. And he's saying this is not just about Ikiti State, this is not just about Nigeria. Everybody has read what he has written. And now, because of the words that has been used, that he is his um, fellow partners. Have gone back to the Supreme Court and twisted the arm of power to make things work in their favor. If it were you, would you take this in? Because many persons have been saying, oh, Are should have done this in a civil way, don't criminalize it. But the choice of words that have been used, if it were to be you, Chita Unwala, will you have taken the, the, the path of being civil or the criminal way? Well, well could, could be, could be told. Um, there is nobody whose um, image and uh, whose image will, will be battered and he will be uh, comfortable with it. Nobody, nobody, including yeah. myself. So if your image is being battered, you cannot be comfortable with it. Uh, you would want to bring up an action for defamation. And because, you know, some of us have always preferred the um, civil solution to defamation, saying that it is the best and the state resources shouldn't be used. Uh, for defamatory matters and all that to protect the image of anybody, uh, it is not to be, it was to decriminalize um, uh, defamation. But that does not mean that people who actually suffer defamation shouldn't, uh, shouldn't seek redress from the court. That's not what we're trying to say. Mm. But the point is this you know, 
Yes. You know, devolution is devolution is a fluid. Now, you know, a lot of Nigerians did not know much about the uh, book by Daily Parochin. The information suit against Daily Parochin exposed what was said against Atom Babalola. Mm. The information suit exposed it. Because it was even within this period that that book became a bestseller. That that book even ran out of stock. It is within this period that the book ran out of stock. So, you, 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 I, I watched a video about a man who was talking about the uh, information and, and he was advised that he said, see, sometimes, especially when you look at this, you look at the pros and the cons mm. of, uh, of uh, picking up a defamatory action against anybody. And whether it will further hurt your image, if you, if you agree with me, irrespective of how this matter turns out, mm. if you irrespective of how this matter turns out, as of today, mm. this matter and the arrest of Lily Pawotini has further hurt the image of Tifato Mamalala. It has further hurt his image and hurt his friend. Right. If you agree with me, it has further hurt his image and his friend. And that's why we are saying that we have to be careful when dealing with issues of this organization. So I think it's solved that particular problem is trying to solve. I think we solved it. You know, you look at these things and there are certain persons who will bring up issues against you. You just forget about it. An Ogana man calls you a cheat and you want to, you take the Ogana man to court. Or you take him to, uh, to social but, media. But that's not the case. Will, that's not the case in this particular thing because you, uh, that analogy but doesn't what, work. What do you and Ogana man in the circumstances is that? If you look at the difference between Daily Pirate and Sipato Balola, mm. you cannot compare both. When something has been you written in a book, you know, generations will read it. Are you inferring that Arab Afe Babalola will have stand down and allow what he has worked for to just be maligned? No, 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 no. That's not what we're saying. Okay, we're what are you saying? We're saying that criminalizing the whole matter is where we have issues. See, if Afe Babalola pursuing the matter is not an issue for us. Okay, what's the issue? What? The way the matter was handled, the way Jolie um, Palosi was kidnapped, moved down to moved down to Ekiti by the police. Mm. The level of harassment over what? Over defamation? No, now that that is not acceptable. Oh. It's not acceptable. It's the policy of a witness. And oh. if you listen to the press uh, the press release he granted, you will discover that they have been taunting him on these issues for a while now. For a while. That's not what. That's not how it should be dealt with. And that's why we are saying that you can take resources to carry out these actions because it's a big win. If, a, if an Ogana man goes to the police to say, X, Y, Z, I have disclaimed me, would the police take such an action against that, that big man or that mighty man? You know, we cannot be having selective justice in this country. We cannot have selective justice. I'm right. not saying that people have a moral shouldn't pursue his right. That's not what we're saying. And I can never suggest that. Because if I was to be in the to, I would also pursue my right. Right. But, you know, it's about how you go about pursuing your rights. And that's why we're saying that you should have naturally dealt with this matter from the same angle. Right. And not the criminal aspect of it. Right. And not, even the only way you will decide to use the criminal means, which is also within your rights, even where you decide to use the criminal means, there's another important thing you must understand. The way at which the police went about it was what escalated the matter. All right, we'll, the we'll get there. Was not professional at all. Yes, we'll, we'll get to so that we point. From equity state down to Lagos mm. without any. Oh, no, 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 no. All no. right, we, we'll get to that point as well. Please hang in there. Yeah, who's on? Okay. Like, um, like you talked about an Akada man who would walk into a police station and say, I was defamed. Mm. And he, he wouldn't walk out the same way he's working out for. Um, Chief, Baba, Baba, yeah, Baba Lola right yeah. now. So, what actually does the common man have in Nigeria? Like, what are right? If actually a prominent man like Dele Farutumi could have been whisked away from his office in Lagos down to Ekiti, mm. and the um, nation is actually not really silent, but it was possible, it was something that could have been done, yeah. and the police of Lagos is actually was not even aware. 
that they were coming in from Ekiti to pick him up. So how is the common man even sure that the justice system will actually favor them if something like this should get to them? Can't be told. In Nigeria, as presently constituted, the common man has nothing. Nothing in today's Nigeria. The common man has nothing. Justice, so anything, the common man has nothing. The law is made for the poor, the poor man to be, not for the big ways to be. And that's the problem we have. That's the problem we have. The police is used to torture those who do not have power. The same police that have been paid with that tax money. The same police that have been paid with that tax money. So, what is left for the government? Actually, there's nothing I would answer you. Actually, there's nothing in this country today. The criminal justice system does not talk about the former. If, it, if you don't have money, you cannot even pursue your life. Like, criminally. Mm. If you report a matter to the police, the police expect you to pay them, to pay them, to mobilize them. To go and carry out arrest. The police expect him to still uh, uh, pay them for every day they go to court. Yeah. On the criminal matter against him, for there be a complainant. Mm. What is there for the poor man? What is there for the common man on the street? There doesn't really know nothing. Meanwhile, this same police is paying salary every day. This is the type of country we have found ourselves. Mm. We have found ourselves in a terrible situation. I mean, it's not have come to that reality yet. See, I'm afraid. I'm afraid because what is coming in this country, what is coming with the way we are running this country, what is coming when the average man, when the poor man on the street rises up, there will be great danger in this country. The day the poor man on the street rises up, over the wickedness we have made on them, over the wickedness of society has made on them, the day he rises up, we will not be able. We will not be able to withstand him. It is sad. That is why we must change this thing. Mm. If you look at the gap between the poor and the rich in this country, there's no middle class in this country. It's either you are poor or you are rich. The gap mm. is so wide. And these people, they use the resources they have, they use the content they have against those that are underprivileged. So if someone that's popular, and also a lawyer, like Daniel Parochimo, could he handle the way he was handled with our state resources, which is with his taxes? What about the man who is not even a lawyer? What about the man who 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 is just a common on the street? Oh. This is the type of mission we are found ourselves. Yes. Where the big wings have their way at all times, all times they have their way. Even if they are wrong, they also they still have their way. All right. That's how we have wired our yeah, uh, uh, Barista, uh, uh, you inched on it earlier, so let's talk about it now. The conduct of the police on this matter, okay, um, uh, and it was said, there was a press conference that was done, I think, um, over the weekend, in which, um, you know, the council to Afe Babalola talked on this matter to say, this is what happened, it got all winked, and some of what you have explained earlier about what was written in the book, and then he petitioned, you know, the police in Ekiti State, and that was all he did, actually. So he didn't teach the police how to do their work. But there is another angle that people are looking at to say, uh, criminalizing defamation. You know, there's a, there are a couple of states in which this is no more, as in criminal defamation has been, uh, you know, set aside. It's no more a criminal offense. And Lagos is part of it as well. Maybe that is why the case could not be pursued in Lagos. And, you know, the police in Ekiti had to come. In fact, it's zone two, in which that command is under them, it has been silent. It's more like they are not aware of that. So the police traveled all the way from Ekiti State because of the criminal nature of that petition and came into Lagos, you know, to arrest him. Some have called it abductions, come out call it, uh, you know, whatever, because they feel it was not properly done. And so it was bungled from Lagos to Ikiti State. Um, can you fault the police in that? Because Arafa Babalola obviously wanted the criminal, um, the defamation case to be criminal in nature. And so that cannot happen in Lagos because Lagos cannot have it. Defamation has been decriminalized in Lagos. So he had to move him or petition the police because he didn't do that. 
It wasn't his infrastructure, his boss, his facility. Ariel Febabrela doesn't own the police. He can only report, you know, and the police did what they should do. So my question is, and part of what people have been asking, should we blame Ariel Febabrela for the conduct of the police? That's number one. Number two, were the police right to have gone to Lagos State to go and arrest um, Dele Faro Timi because of the criminal nature of that petition? They should do their work. How would you want them to do their work if actually you didn't give them free hands to do their work? So, number two question is, are the police wrong in taking him from Lagos to Ikiti State? Constitutionally yeah, speaking. You know, I, I, want to, I want to correct this impression. When you say nobody goes into the police, I think that's not correct. A lot of people in this country who is the police. But uh, by our law, country. nobody owns the police. The police and oh, is, oh, is oh, an oh, institution oh, of the state. No, no, don't work in this country. Let's just see. You have to come to the reality of what is happening in Nigeria. You're a lawyer, Vice Chair. Don't work in this country. Hmm. This country, I mean, we have, he is our lawyer. But laws are not working in this country for the big wings. It's only working for the poor man. What is this country? See, there's one thing about, I, I don't like doing I don't like presenting about this issue. Hmm. Nigeria's laws, laws, does not work in this country. It doesn't work. How many people have you been seen that has been arrested and 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 prosecuted and and convicted and 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 the person has come? They said, "How many? How many have you seen in your lifetime? How many have you seen arrested, prosecuted, and convicted? How many?" What is wrong with me? You know why it's not hard? Why? Because the Lord are meant to protect them. The Lord are not meant for them to obey. But let me say this. If we go state as a state, carry us out in the station, decriminalizing the permission. Mm. It also means that the permission is no longer criminal in Lagos. It is. Why? The criminal code, Lagos is still governed by the criminal code. Yeah. And the criminal code uh, criminalizes the permission. Okay. So Lagos State, we cannot say that Lagos State um, has decriminalized okay. the permission, or okay. you cannot bring up uh, a decommission case uh, uh, criminally in Lagos. You can under the criminal code. Okay. Uh, but probably under the full state law, if that is the case, I'm not too sure of that. Under the Lagos state law, you if, if they have decriminalized the permission, it is a good step, a right step, and the right direction. And I think it is also good. But, can you bring up a criminal matter within legal state? Yes, you can bring up a criminal matter within legal state. Like the commission within legal state, under the criminal code. Now, not necessarily under the or state law. So, I, I, I must have to correct that particular impression. Now, moving the matter from um, legal state, State. Now, you know, this, this has to do with the issue of legislation. I, I need to not know where the said defamation took place. That he is real time, he is real taking the state, not even of the state that is even closer, but taking the state state for uh, um, a criminal matter, a, a defamatory matter to be tried in the state. Why did he ask him about that take the matter to the state? Is it because it is where he is comfortable with whomever? Is in charge there. Mm. This is a question that we ask him. Why not why is it this? Why not go this? Why not go this? Why should we have uh, taken it? Why, why is it? Why is it? Why is it? Why is it? Why is You see, it may also give flow to the allegations and the corruption in the criminal justice system. Mm. And for a matter that is available as information, my mother is very well as the permission. Because he is a man that is very powerful. He is a man that is very A magistrate court. That is, that is, it's common in nature. That ordinarily you can, you can provide a bail application in the and say, my Lord, I, 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 wish to, I, I wish to apply for the bail of XYZ. Mm. And the court will grant it. But what did the court do? The court actually uh, asked them to put a bill application in the magistrate court in writing. 
Un presidente. Un presidente. Un presidente. Sí. This whole thing was. It looks like something that was well orchestrated. It looks like something that was well orchestrated. There are lots of questions to be asked and answered in the circumstances. Mm. See, it's in this country. We have to salvage this country from the hands of these people. So we have held down this country to the point it is today. And we won't start with whatever platform we find that ever we have to salvage our country, but this is the only thing we have. They will stop talking. Mm. They will run this country and already the country is on ground. So now, we, quick, quick, quick one, Barrister, if I may butt in here before Uzums will come in now. You know, I asked about the, the workings of the police. Were they wrong? That interstate move, that's number one. And number two, we have a court. Now, there might be challenges here. You have talked about corruption, and you are not the only person that, okay, we can do more. In fact, my lord, uh, Justice Kiki Reukun, when she came in, said, we have a lot to do. Corruption will not be tolerated again. Just recently, like two weeks ago, some justices were hammered with a big stick from the NJC. Say, we have challenges, we know. But now, are we getting to that era in which we have started to second guess our courts? We have a court. We have, I mean, justices, magistrates that have been saddled with this responsibility. And it is in their wisdom, you know this, that they adjudicate these matters. Now, the moment they give something and we are not pleased with it, and we are saying they should have done it this way, they should have done it this way, are we not taking away the sanctity of the same court, barrister? No, 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 no. You, you have to understand this. You have to understand this. Okay, I am. The rules are the Please, laws. educate me. The laws, are, the laws are the laws. Yeah. And when the laws are not being followed, you know, you raise all concerns. Even when Supreme Court gives a judgment, and analysts and uh, uh, legal scholars look at, uh, look, as, as well look at the Supreme Court's decision and say, no, this Supreme Court, this decision by the Supreme Court, mm. no, it is the law after the Supreme but in our own reasoning, the decision of the Supreme Court was not properly done. It should have gone this way. It should have gone that way. Or the Supreme Court did not look at all the facts before it before it is the decision. Then at that point, an individual or whoever was interested in the matter uh, or was part of the matter can now apply for judicial review. That is why you have judicial review. It does not at any point remove the sanctity. Professionally, in this circumstance, because of the case of the police acting professionally, 
the police did not act professionally any longer. How? What did this go to a doctor? You came into a state without any coordination with the and so, what is funny is this. What is funny, and let me, let me turn to my back. Do not forget, on this same issue, mm. on this same issue, the police within Lagos had earlier on invited uh, Lily Parusi, wanted him there. And he had answered. On, uh, he was wanted to be on some cause, and come And the one I said, whatever you want to do, just invite me, I will come. Then the police from nowhere, all the way from from uh, uh, comes without giving me cause. So the only matter that was ongoing, the previous invitation by the police goes down to goes down to his office without even inviting him, mm. without inviting him. The normal procedure and reasonable procedure is that the police will invite him and say you have a case to answer in the Go over to the and answer the said case against him. There's a petition against him. But no, no such thing was done. Public investigation was not done in the same of that. Before the police will rush to court, you must have they must have carried out the one investigation. All right. You went and said, see, if I have a has written a petition against you mm. on XYZ, and these are the allegations he has laid against you, what do you answer to it? And you now give your own, where they are not convinced and they feel that, yes, you have the same the same thing. What do they do? They take it to court. That is how uh, the system works. That is how mm. the system is supposed to work. All and right. You know, when something is speaking, yes. they will speedily take, uh, they will speedily arrest him, mm. adopt you, then rush it out to court. All right, yeah. So. Okay, Barrister Wala. <laughs> I've heard all you said so far, but I want to ask you, do you think it's the judiciary that is on trial here, or it's just a case of two lawyers actually slugging it out in court? Like... Barrister, can you hear me? You know, it, 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 okay. Yes, I, I can hear you. The judiciary, the judiciary, I, I, I wouldn't say the judiciary is on trial. I wouldn't say the judiciary is on trial, because the judiciary is on this own. Truth be told, two of us are sad. We are, see, when we talk about this issue, like one of my friends would say, he said the easiest way to get angry is to discuss the other's problem. See, the, 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 truth be told, uh, the, what is happening in our system is sad. Mm. It is sad. It is unfortunate. And I, I, I wouldn't want to say the judiciary is on trial, but we all know, we all know that we can do better. Mm. We can do better. Justice should not be for the higher mighty in society. And I'm not looking at this matter from the angle of two lawyers, though. Mm. There's no two lawyers over here. Oh. So who are they? There's a big man. Uh, you know, it is not two lawyers now. You only vote for them are lawyers. Yeah, they are lawyers. lawyers. That's like a fact. Yeah, they, they are lawyers, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But a big man, an influential man in society, and the young man, uh, can I quickly, can I quickly chip in something? Okay, by virtue of age, by virtue of practice, one might say and can say obviously, I've heard Babalola stand tall, you know, years experience and of course influence. Delifaro to me as well. He's not a small fry. He has done well for himself. He has a big court following in the public space, in the social media. He is a right activist as well. So are we trying to do this one like? I mean, you are trying to make it look like. Um, a, a, a part or so between a, a, a Goliath and a David. Is that what you're saying? They have done well for themselves in their, in their different rights. See, what would we do? In the Nigerian context, eh, let me tell you, it's not about how many the thousands of persons that follow you on social media. This social media. Social media is not. No, I'm talking matter. I'm not talking about literal followers. I'm talking about influence. The kind how influential no, no, no. you cannot compare you cannot compare the influence uh, people like two percent of Balola and the uh, uh, house in this country and the home in house in this country mm. to that of the Paris. You can you can it doesn't even come close. It but, doesn't but, even come close. Uh, uh, um Barrister, sorry, come. pardon me. <laughs> it is because Arif Afe Babalola has done well for himself. He has practiced this law for you know all his life, actually. And that should not be an handicap. That should not be like he has done something wrong. It's hard work. No, 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 
Nobody is saying that. Nobody, nobody is saying that. See, I am not here vilifying uh, Tiba Tiba Manola, and okay. I will not also do that. Okay. I am not here vilifying Tiba Manola. See, I give him, I, I, I give him his credit. Yeah. I completely give him his credit for his hard work, for getting to where he is. Whatever means he got down there. But I give him, I give him credit for it. Mm. Because it takes a lot. It takes a lot yeah. to get down to where he is today. Mm. And of course, like I said before, nobody will be happy where issues of this magnitude, um, uh, where defamatory uh, matters are brought against the person. Everybody, especially for a man who has worked that hard, everybody will want to protect their reputation. However, the mode of your you mode you, you went about protecting your reputation is another issue. And that's why we are saying that it is looking more like an oppression. It's Okay, we'll try and reconnect with him. Barrister Chetam, if you can hear me, please speak up. All right, we we'll get through to the matter as well. And you know, um, Barrister was trying to say it's maybe uh, it's not just about fighting for your right. It's not just about defending what you have worked for. In the case of um, uh, Chief Afe Babalola, that how you do that as well matters, yeah. you know. And but some others will say, this is a battle. You can't teach me how to fight my battle. These are some of the issues as well. Yes, Barry Stachetan. If you can hear me, please land on your thumb. Yes, can you can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. We okay. can hear you. Please now, go ahead. What, 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 we're saying, what we're saying is that people have a has. He's within his right to pursue his right. Mm. No, we will not stop him from pursuing his right. But you know, when, when you're pursuing your right, you're committing other issues, of course, beyond beyond uh, zero parochy. We saw the actions of the police. We saw how even lawyers within the firm were harassed and singulated. No, now. No, we cannot applaud such an action. But you applaud it. I believe he knows better. I believe he knows better on the subject matter. And we're expressing, let me tell you, these are models in the profession. Mm. And a lot of us as young people, we look up to them. We look up to them for direction on how to deal with issues. So if they're not dealing with issues the way we expect them to deal with issues, we we'll become concerned. And that's why we are raising up this concern. That's why you see the outcry. That's why you see the outcry. Let me ask you a question. Mm. If this matter was between uh, uh, um, uh, people of the I mean, one of that big wing in the legal profession. Would it have been handled the same way? Or even, even someone like uh, people of Panama. Uh, would it have been handled the same way? It couldn't have been handled the same way. You are human. It couldn't have been handled the same way. Mm. It couldn't have been handled the same way. That's why you see that. You, you see the, out, the, the public outcry. See, there are lots of issues that have been raised against very serious members of the bar. And those issues never, never, never saw the light of the day, eventually. We never saw the end of it. They killed him. They killed him one way or the other. All right. See, we must clear corruption within the judiciary. Corruption within the judiciary has to be dealt with. Dealt with to the end. Dealt with to the end. In love of it. In love of it. So, whether, whether the allegations by the uh, authority is correct or not, mm. We all know one thing, and that should be our take home. Nigerian judiciary, as of today, mm. needs serious cleansing, serious deep cleansing, mm. deep cleansing, from the way judges are recruited down to the quality of judges, the punishment of judges. How many judges are. I think it, 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 I, I'm bothered, I'm bothered because oh, how, right. how do you expect, yeah. you expect to continue like this mm. as a people? Right. But who can make a headway? Okay, Barista Wala. Um, the former, um, that's Ch um, Babalola's chief lead lawyer, Ajayi, who is a former commissioner for justice and attorney general in Ekiti State, said actually that Arefa Babalola in his petition urged the police to use your good office offices to invite Mr. Dele Farotimi to show proof of the truthfulness of his publication. So, he said, according to what was published, mm. he said to invite, not actually because the term we're all using is that 
De La Farutini was kidnapped. Uh, he was risked or uh, he was arrested, arrested yeah. out of um, Lagos State. But somehow it wasn't what Babalola actually petitioned against him. So mm. is this is it that the police did this on their own? Mm. Because people are actually dragging Arafa Babalola, saying he's using his um Influence. his power, his mm. influence to actually um subdue the mm. left me so do you mm. think the police acted on their own mm. because what the punch is saying is something else is totally different from what we actually get in online mm. well, 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 uh, truth, truth be told truth be told um you, you know the police sometimes could be serious, but you know when 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 action or when when giving an instruction mm. but while, while people are concerned about and are putting everything on the uh, of Babala, which 100% shouldn't have been, is because, one, Sibata of Babala, um, who had written the petition and uh, the complainant in the same, in the same matter, mm. you know, we sus there is a great suspicion of why the matter was taken to equity. Why is the matter being provided in equity state? And that's where we are the challenges. So if if Simbabwe and had left the gospel state and moved the whole thing to the state, then it has raised it has raised a serious concern. And raising that serious concern would also attack you know, there are, there are also uh, uh, um unwritten instructions. Unwritten instructions. That is why when you're looking at the regional, if you look at it beyond what is written on paper, mm. there are unwritten instructions that both have been given. Because the police itself did not invite, um, did not invite uh, Daily Parochi. What they did was to get down there and whisk him away, adopted him. That's exactly what they did. They adopted him. Mm -hmm. Like oh. a common criminal. Over what? Reformation. Meanwhile, people are stealing billions in this country and nobody is doing anything about it. Nobody is doing anything about it. The police will never see his action. We will never see his action. So, now, this, this is why people are raising all this concern and mm. putting everything on him. But, of course, the Nigerian police, you, you, you and I know that the Nigerian police, police is one of the most unprofessional police institutions in this country. Mm. In, in, in this world, sorry. The Nigerian police is very unprofessional, very, very unprofessional in the approach. Highly unprofessional in the approach. Uh, a barrister, uh, uh, permit me to abort in here. Yes. Um, okay, I, I don't know if you can switch on your video mode, uh, we'll appreciate that as well, um, so that we can have you more, I mean, you know, converse with you visually now, thank you. You know, there are, some have saying this case on one side, RF Afe Babalala, because it seems everything has been put on him now, in fact, there are so many persons that say, Are you are the elderly person here. And this is a case of a younger person to an elderly person. Yes, what the person said, according to you, has hurt you, your name and your reputation, your legal firm as well. And it has been documented in a book that will be read hundreds of years from now, in as much that book is still in circulation. Some are saying, please take this out of the court. And the lawyers as well, in that press conference said, let Dele Farotimi prove what he's saying. And that is all. You know, different angles to this matter. You can't just throw words into, um, you know, the public space without being able. It's, that is no problem. Just come and prove it. And another angle is this. Some are saying, for the person, personality of a daily pharaoh team, with due respect to him, some are seeing him as a careless talker. Somebody that throws whatever he believes in, irrespective of whose all is God, that there's a difference in you being blunt. And there's a difference in you being a careless talker, using all kinds of derogatory words on whatever he believes in and on whoever he thinks in the wrong. Do you see from that aspect as well that you could have something, you could have some proof, but as well, because when you listen to his podcast, when you listen to his interviews, his use of words, he ought to know, he ought to know there is no bad that he, he ought. He just says it the way he thinks it as well. Okay. Um, are you with me, Barry Statutam? Are you with me? Okay. Um, I think we are. I can, I can hear you. Sorry, I lost that conference. I okay. can hear you now. Okay. 
Okay, all right. And I said something earlier. We would like you to... Okay, all right. Good, that we can see you. Some have said as well that maybe there should be out-of-court settlement. The area of Babalola um, councillor say, let Dele Farotimi, Esquire, come and prove his um, case. Let him just give the evidence. And as some persons are saying, why push all of this on Afe Babalola? Have you seen when a Dele Farotimi talks in his podcast, in his interviews, that he's a careless talker? Will you say as well, maybe the use of language, not just on Afe Babalola, the way he talks, that he needs, you know, to be reined in as well. Now you can have your fast, you can be blunt, but then his use of words, you know, leaves much to be desired. If actually you know who a daily foul team is. Well, well, truth is, truth be told, I'm not a big fan of daily policy. Okay. But you know, um, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of daily policy. And I will say there are a few things he, he had uh, talked about, and uh, uh, it didn't go that well with me prior to, prior to this particular time. So um, for someone like me. I, I cannot sit here and tell you that, oh, I'm, I'm a, a fan of the Liberal School and I enjoy some of the things he see and his approach or ways of getting to this whole thing, you know. But it, it, it truth be told, I am also one who would always stand against um, oppression, who would always stand against intimidation of any form and anybody, even if it's my core enemy and I see that the person is being intimidated, intimidated at any point, trust me, I will stand. I will stand, I will speak against such an explanation. That's the kind of person I am. But now, but looking at the personality of uh, Dele Farotimi, the fact that um, on one or two, some of his approaches, uh, some persons do not fancy some of his approaches and all that, mm. let's also ask ourselves the issues beyond his approach of personality, but the issues he has raised or he raised within this sector, are they true? Mm. Are they genuine? Are they genuine? You know, sometimes we look, we leave the substance and we start chasing the, the chasing shadows around it and we forget about the real issues that are being raised. Mm. The real issues that are being raised. You know, he has also, he has made these allegations against um, Chief of Balola. It's also within his own power, right, to also prove himself right or wrong. Yeah. He has to prove the statements he has made. Oh. When you see, in all of this, we are not saying that um, they are to me should not have been uh, uh, tried or chief of organization that pursues his, his matter against him. That's not what we are saying. Mm. A lot of us are concerned against the manner in which that was done, in which this whole thing has been handled. And that's why we are saying that there's something fishy about it. A lot of us also know that the allegations, the allegations about corruption now, I don't know about the issues with respect to the matter in question where he said, where he had purported, where he purportedly said that uh, uh, Chief of Malola corrupted the Supreme Court mm. to give it a judgment against him. I'm not, I don't really concern myself with all that, but we all know that there's corruption in the nation. Okay, Barrister Wala. Everybody in this country knows that. Barrister Wala, can you hear me? Loud and clever. Okay. So in clear terms, will you say this is a case of rule of law or using the institutions of the state for harassment? In clear terms, actually. So when, when we are talking about rule of law, what is rule of law? Someone has decided to protect his rights. We have said to use taxpayers' money to protect the rights of, of a, a particular individual, to protect the image of a particular individual. And some of us are concerned with it. That I can only pay tax and my tax is used to protect the image of an individual, a person who feels the same, even if it is right within the law. That's why we have advocated against the uh, criminalization of defamation and saying that defamation should be decriminalized. Defamation should be decriminalized. So, and when you look at it, the approach by the police itself, the old professional from by the police itself, it also raises concern. It raises serious issues. So then the deliver to me. I'm quiet about it and say, oh, deliver to me can go to hell. He can do whatever he wants to do. What if it worries is me? What happens? Mm. What if worries is you? What happens? Have we not seen a situation where a, 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 um, a, a news presenter was in the studio presenting and the police in this country, this country, this year, the police went into the studio and carried, and carried the person. 
What level of what level? I see. What level? That's the highest level of public service we have found in our police in our system today. So see, these are if you want to talk about rule of law, rule of law is currently at the bottom of those who are trying to execute the law. All right, and you know because. Please tell me what the rule of law is. Yeah, quickly no, because no. of time. Uh, sorry, I I just like to put this there because we are you know hosting home gradually. Some have cited the case uh, that happened recently between, uh, you know, Martin Orsay, popularly called VDM, you know, and um, some claims he made uh, on a particular video where he tacitly, you know, said some things about uh, the Falanos, the older Falanos and the younger Falanos, the father and the son, Femi Falano, SEM, the legal luminary, and of course his son, as well, Fouse, that's for Larry Falano. And, um, you know, the father and the son petitioned, uh, you know, him, uh, referred the case to the courts, and um, there wasn't this kind of upright then, because you might want to say, in Falano, respectfully speaking, especially Femi Falano, and in VDM, if you understand what I'm saying, that why, these, why didn't their own case, because it's about defamation of character, uh, you know, as well, have this kind of opera, you know, the same thing that happened then, or is it because the Falanons did what exactly, what they should do, and Arafe Babalala didn't total line? If you understand the nexus. Very well. Yes. Now, uh, quickly, I must tell you that the reason why you don't have that the same outside is because um, the Falanons decided to use the civil aspect of information. While Chief Asafa Malala is now making use of the criminal part of the permission. That's why you're not getting. That's why which not, which are both constitutional. Right? Now, what? They are both constitutional. Of course. Of course. Okay. Now, they are within the laws of our country. You can bring it through criminal or civil means. It is within your right to decide on which to use. So, what's the but issue you know, here? What has the people made this criminal part of? Sorry? I said, so what is the issue here? If both approaches are constitutional, is it just the behavior of the police? Exactly. Exactly. The behavior of the police, as well as taking them, as well as moving the matter down to the where the entire matter is not a from. Where it seems, I think, it seems, I think, she got it over has an upper hand. Barrister, Barrister Wala. These are issues. Yeah. Okay, Barrister Wala, please, can you hear me? Can you hear Not me? Not a claimer. Okay. You're saying um, she, um, Arifa Babalola was using his power, but his lead lawyer stated that he actually told the police to invite the leper to me. So why are we still pinning it on Babalola like... He actually told the police to go and kidnap him. Mm. It was actually stated clearly yeah. that he was asked, the police was asked to invite the Lefaro to me. So whatever mm. is happening should not be placed on Babalola. I think it should actually be um, differentiated. They should keep him out of it because they have come out to actually speak up to say that they were asked, they told the police to invite him, mm. not to whisk him away like we are all insinuating. Well, um... There's only called the chain of causation. When you look at the chain of causation, something happens that led to, to another thing. And if that thing, if that first thing did not happen, the result we got we would have gotten it. If Chief of had All right. Um, uh, that's uh, technology there. But then. Uh, we are almost there already, and yeah. um, not sure if by statute time is still with us. If you are with us, can you please speak up? Oh, all right. Um, this is where you know we'll try um apply the brakes because um just for the record, the intention of this episode of this program this morning is for information and yeah. education. You know, the case is in court already, so. Whatever Milos choose to do on it, it's, it's the prerogative of the court. And, yeah. um, so we'll run subsidies of the same matter as well. But, you know, we talked about the approach of the petition yeah. and the approach of the, the police, police on this matter, which appears to be impugning 
you know, and everybody is spinning yeah. it on RF and blah, 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 blah. But then, yeah, uh, Barrister Chitama said, maybe there are some things that n need not to be said. You just know the intention is just there. But then, you know, we are not clairvoyant. We can't read people's <laughs> minds. We can only yeah. do our job. And this matter. We'll have loved to have by statue time with us to run it off. But then, if we can't, we want to sincerely appreciate him for his time and his take on the program today. You know, maybe technology has um, failed us, you know, in running up the conversation. But I'm sure uh, you've enjoyed today's program. Okay, um, we'll be back for the second installment for the week. And of course, uh, we must go. So, all right. Um, thank you very much for staying with us. Mm. And we hope to see you tomorrow mm. because we have lots of packages for you of tomorrow we, we morning. We usually do. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thank you, Femi Ojo. You're welcome, <laughs> your, your initiation on the program <gasps> is almost done. We'll okay. finish it with the implication after now. All with right. With the production team, we'll tell you what to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, you can have a recap of this program on our YouTube channel or Western Spring Television. And of course, uh, Western Spring TV, that's on YouTube. And of course, Western Spring Television on various social media platforms. You have the address on your screen already. Femi Ojo is my name. The, I keep saying that. The first day of the rest of your life. Make it count. I mean, whatever you do, please stay alive. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>